Let's get right to the violence. That's footage of Trump vet Roger Stone. As you could see from the way it was presented, that was released in those original January 6th committee hearings. Tonight, we have breaking news of additional Stone tapes airing in the U.S. for the first time. New videos show Trump advisor Roger Stone in Washington on January 6th, the day of the insurrection. And they undercut one common defense by Trump and some of his allies who did try to overthrow the election results that they really believe Trump won, even if delusionally that it was their actual belief. Yet, in the new video, here is Stone on January 6th casually referring to the fact that Donald Trump lost, as he refers to they, the Trump campaign officials. That's why they lost. They don't know what they're doing. It's why they lost. They don't know what they're doing. Well, I'm going to show you that new tape in this moment in wider context. Stone's outburst came as he learned how they, Trump officials, welcomed support for the march on the Capitol. Not him speaking at the infamous rally that day where the now indicted Trump, who you see on your screen giving that address, as well as the now indicted Giuliani and Eastman, spoke to the crowd, which then stormed the Capitol. So here it is in context. Stone on the 6th learning that he was apparently not going to join them and get to speak up at that lectern that day. I don't understand how they want us to lead the march, but they can't even tell us where to go. So it doesn't make any sense. I think you just got your answer. That we're not speaking? Yeah. I mean, if we were speaking, we'd have transportation, as Giuliani did. It's fun. <laughs> Let's go upstairs and watch this on TV. It was very clear I was never on their list. Whole thing was a con job. No, it's infuriating. It's just, it's just childish and it's amateurish. That's why they lost. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I hear you. All right, I will talk to you in a bit. Yep. You're hearing the voice of Roger Stone, who then comes in on camera. It's all picked up on audio on the phone. It's why they lost. Now, in public, Roger Stone spent months pushing the lies that Trump actually won or the race was stolen. He was one of the people touting. To stop the steal online. He pushed that message out to other groups and militias that he was seen with. The footage also shows some of the tension here between Stone and the official campaign. This person, Roger Stone, was also still a convict, hoping for a full pardon from then outgoing President Trump. He wanted as well the larger role in what was becoming that post-loss havoc. Now, the next new clip we have for you is from before the actual voting, October 30th, when there were many signs that Trump could lose. There were people saying he was likely going to lose. You'll notice in what we're about to play for you, Stone seems almost resigned to that. He puts the idea of the incumbent president being reelected as a, more like a, a distant possibility. And he appears to be mulling some kind of independent action, which would overlap with what we showed you recently, the elector plot that he would push days later. I've been really focused on trying to help Donald win this election, which, you know, and I'm doing that unofficially and, uh, and informally because his campaign is so extraordinarily f***ed up. So, so, go, so to go back to your question, will he win? I don't know. Can he win? It's possible. I, I really expect a 2000-like result with a long, drawn-out squabble over who won. This is not a campaign structured for a dogfight, and that's what we have now. So, so independent action is required, you know? Independent action is required. That is basically Roger Stone telling somebody what he thinks it might take. The reference to 2000 is striking. Stone was known as well for his involvement in what was sometimes called the Brooks Brothers riot, the efforts in Florida, but the big difference was 2000, whatever you think about it, did come down to one state. Nobody disagrees about that. And then contesting the results in one state of Florida, which meant if Florida went one way or the other, the whole thing, of course, would go back and forth to the different opposing candidates. 2020 proved to be nothing like that. Trump lost by three states. He lost badly. He lost in a way that the courts and the Supreme Court never took those appeals. So what Stone was saying right there was a version of what they hoped to create, not that it existed, but the elector plot, getting state legislatures involved, lying about fraud in ways that other people have now been indicted for. All of that was to create a fraudulent effort to make it seem like 2000. And the footage you're seeing was provided to the beat by the filmmakers who made A Storm Foretold. 
And that film, that project, is not currently available in the U.S. Now, I want to remind you, Stone took the fifth when he was interviewed by the Jan 6 committee. But this and the other footage and reporting does shed more light on a story that he, through his legal rights, refused to tell Congress when it was investigating this. He is Trump's longest-serving advisor. He is a convicted felon. He publicly talked up violence. He privately plotted to overthrow results in states Trump was losing or lost. That was the video we showed you last week. He was just publicly associated with extremist groups ahead of the 6th. And then what you see in these clips today is that when on the 6th he was sidelined from his hopes to speak on that same stage as Donald Trump, well, the anger kicks in. He's a human being, and he sounds like he's trying to process and absorb that in front of other people. You can interpret that however you will, whatever he thought others would think in the room, as well as the cameras rolling, something that has been a part of the Roger Stone and Donald Trump pseudo-reality show for their whole adult lives. He was rejected. He was upset. And he sort of retreated to his hotel room after having worked so much behind the scenes for what he then had previously called independent action. And then when he saw the Capitol insurrection unfold on TV, well, this is where the mood did appear to change, and he wanted out, packing his bags and leaving D.C. So, so independent action is required. The final decision as to who the state legislatures authorize be sent to the Electoral College is a decision made solely by the legislature. That's why they lost. They don't know what they're doing. Good Lord, let's get right to the violence. These are people from Trump on down who live and thrive through their presentation of self. Some call it propaganda, other call it a reality show, some call it just mastering whatever the mediums are of the time. They kept the cameras rolling. Many of them are now indicted, stone facing heat, but not indicted. So the question, as always, becomes, are you sure you stand by everything you said and did with the cameras you invited in? As Sean Carter once said, the same sword that knight you can be the sword that good knights you.